Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to share the inheritance with me. He replied to him, Friend, who appointed me as your judge and arbitrator? Read, for though one may be rich, one's life does not consist of possessions. Then he told them a parable. There was a rich man whose land produced a bountiful harvest. He asked himself, What shall I do? For I do not have space to store my harvest. And he said, This is what I shall do. I shall tear down my barns and build larger ones. There I shall store all my grain and other goods, and I shall say to myself, Now as for you, you have so many good things stored up for many years. Rest, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, You fool, for this night your life will be demanded of you, and the things you have prepared, to whom will they belong? Thus it will be for all who store up treasure for themselves, but are not rich in what matters to God. The Gospel of the Lord. In the gospel, someone in the crowd asked Jesus, kind of demands of Jesus, tell my brother to share the inheritance with me, saying, I have a right to the inheritance. Um, he's my brother. He should have given some of it to me. It's maybe how my parents wanted it to be. I have a right to that inheritance, so tell my brother to give my share to me. In the gospel, this is one of the occasions where Jesus says no, at least implicitly, because he doesn't do it. In a way, he says no, and he says, who appointed me as your judge and arbitrator? I'm not going to do that. You may have a right to it. Maybe your brother stole it from you. Maybe it's something you should have. Maybe your parents wanted you to have it, but it's not up to me to give that to you. I'm going to do nothing about it. So even though you may have a right to it, maybe it's something you don't need. You're getting by, with it just, fi you're getting by just fine without it right now. I'm not going to do anything to change your situation, Jesus says. And then he addresses the whole crowd by simply saying, um, take care to guard against all greed or avoid greed in all of its forms, as one translation says. So I guess one of the forms of greed is going to be um, asking for things we don't need. I have a right to this. Maybe I paid for it. The, the law says I can have it, but I don't need it. That's one form of greed that Jesus addresses in the gospel. Then as he tells the crowd the parable, um, it's not necessarily a parable about sharing with the poor. It's not a parable about, about not being rich. It's a parable about hoarding, about keeping things to ourselves in this life, not being generous during our lifetime, as he tells that parable. So maybe that's one of the other forms of greed that Jesus addresses in the gospel. So it's hoarding and then also um, having a right to something when we don't really need it. Maybe those are a couple of the forms of greed that Jesus addresses in the gospel today. Um, for ourselves, um, it's not exactly the same in our situation in this day and age, but there are different forms that our greed can take, um, times when we either hoard or we have um, a right to something. Maybe for some it's um, the right to whatever compensation comes from a lawsuit, or even the right to bring a lawsuit and maybe to win one. Is that something that you need to do? Is it necessary or not? Um, you have a right to government aid in some ways, welfare, workers' comp, disability. But is that something that you need? Yeah, in some ways, certainly, that helps people get by from week to week and month to month. And then there are others who don't need that at all, but take it. Um, it's your right to um, insurance money, whether it's um, for a car, for home, for things that are taken or stolen or lost. You have a right to that money. You paid your premiums. Is that something that you need, though? Uh, maybe it's your right even in a store um, to a bargain item. You were there first in line. You were ahead of the other people. You have a right to it. You're there. But is that something you need, something that you can let somebody else have instead of you having it? And then even the whole idea about hoarding things as well. Again, it's not so much um, that others, you're taking things away from others, but the idea is that you're not sharing now and that you're saving for some kind of future, usually years and years down the road. We're not hoarding for days and weeks down the road, it's for years and years to come. 
And so Jesus warns us to avoid greed in all of its forms, especially maybe those two forms, the right to have something that we don't need and also hoarding of things. However, there's always a fine line though, isn't there? Being prudent and being good stewards, planning for the future, because there was the parable of the good steward who turns his five into ten, turns his two into four, right? And Jesus approves of good stewardship, of good management of money and of the goods of this world. Where is the line between greed and between prudence for planning for our future so that we don't have to depend upon others? Others don't have to take care of us as we get older and, and life goes by. I think it's, um, it's not greed if you're worried about next month's rent, if you're worried about next week's car payment, or worried about them turning off electricity tomorrow. That's really not a matter of greed. That's some um, basic necessity and there's pressure to it right now. If we're worried about how am I going to pay the rent 10 years from now, or how do I pay my water bill five years from now, maybe we're a little bit greedy that way. If you're not sharing in the meantime, if you're not generous in the meantime while you also save up for the future, maybe that's also greed for us. I think for us in the Christian life, because this varies from person to person, family to family, um, it varies a little bit, maybe a, one of the gauge can, gauges for you can be um, making sure you don't have everything you want. Making sure there are things you can't afford, things that you won't buy, wants and desires that you will not fulfill. Um, so that you're always wanting in some way, always desiring of something in some way. So that you're not have all of your desires fulfilled. I suspect for most of us all of our needs are fulfilled and maybe even one of the gauges too is that they don't have to be filled in the best way possible, right? The best house, the best food, the best cars or whatever, but that our basic needs are fulfilled. And then maybe also to look at too another gauge for you in the spiritual life is maybe there should be a little bit of disquiet and discomfort in our lives as well. A little bit uncomfortable, a little bit of unsurety with uh, where thing, what it's going to be like, you know, 15, 20 years from now in times of retirement. A little bit of that at least. It's probably not a question of heaven or hell in the gospel today of, of the rich man. It's maybe not a question of heaven and hell for him, of his salvation depending upon that or not. Although maybe it is. You know, greed is one of the uh, seven capital sins. However, it's really a question about us being good disciples of Jesus and living a balanced and healthy and Christian lifestyle about having things in their right order, balancing life and putting things in their proper place. And so um, the first reading from the book of Ecclesiastes talks about how all this work that I do, it's all vanity. I store up these things, who will have them, it's all vanity. And then at night I find no rest. I can't sleep, my mind is spinning at night. And maybe that's you from time to time too. I'm not just worried about the basic necessities of life, but worried about how to cover all the bills for the things that we're buying, things that I don't need but that I have. And the mind doesn't rest. And there's a little bit of, um, it's a little bit unhealthy emotionally and, and spiritually as well. So it's a question, I think, for us, the question of greed. It's an issue of balance in our life, about living the right kind of Christian lifestyle. And really it comes down to us policing ourselves in many ways. Nobody really watches over you in that area. Some people make you feel guilty, right? But it, ultimately, it's your decision and you police yourself. So as Jesus tells us to avoid greed in all of its forms, what are some things that we can do to avoid greed? I think number one is the whole idea of stewardship. Stewardship says basically that all that I have is a gift from God and that secondly, all my gifts are to be used primarily for the good of others and lastly for myself. So I think stewardship helps us to avoid greed. When we see that everything we have a little or a lot, it's all gift. And that those gifts are really for, to be used for other people first. So stewardship helps us. Secondly, I think g being grateful helps us to avoid greed. Um, sometimes um, envy is kind of the root of greed. Things that I want, things that I, that I think I need to have. And when I'm grateful for what I do have, when I count the blessings that I do have, then I'm grateful and a little bit less envious and a little bit less greedy as well. So gratitude is a great way to fight against greed. Maybe a third way is, is simply in the area of faith. That is of putting faith in the practice. We have faith, we want to have more faith, I want to live trusting and confiding in God. How do I do that? I have to take a few risks. I need to put my faith in the practice and be a little bit of unsure about some things when it comes to greed or money or possessions. 
I put it into practice. That doesn't mean you're probably going to sell half of what you have today and empty your bank account and give it to the poor, although you're welcome to do that. Some people have done it. St. Francis of Assisi worked very well for him and for others too. However, start with something, right? Do something small. Put your faith into practice. Then fourth, maybe the way, one of the ways we avoid greed is simply by conquering our desire to buy, our desire to have what's new, what's better, what's improved, what I think I need. I mean, you ha we have to replace things that fall apart and are old and don't work anymore, but do we always need to have the best and the newest of things, especially when what we do have is still working? And there's that desire in us to buy, and maybe you can fight that desire. And as the days or the weeks go by and you fight that desire, if you're like me, it's like, wow, I never, I never need that in the first place. I'm glad I never bought that. I'd rather have the money in my pocket or do something else. So fighting that desire, especially to buy. And then fifth, I think the best antidote to greed is its opposite, generosity. Right? If you're giving things away, then it's a great way to relieve greed in your life and a great way to show that you're not greedy. So you can give some, some things away. In, um, in the gospel, the man is building up his barns, tearing them down to build bigger ones so he has more and more for the future. And God says to him, uh, you know, you fool, who are all these things, to whom will all these things belong? For us in this day and age, we know who's going to get our things, right? It's written out in your will and in your trust who gets these things. Probably um, children and grandchildren, for me, my brothers and sisters are the ones mostly in my will. And, and that's fine, but we need to be generous in the meantime. And I would suggest, too, that maybe um, you include charitable organizations or include the church in your wills as well. Treat them, the church as one of your children. So I'll treat the church as one of my siblings in my will so they get a certain part as well. And in the meantime, to be generous too along the way. Because we can think very much, I'll be generous on the day I die, right? There'll be a big inheritance for my family members and others. But really the challenge is to be generous along the way. It's good, I think, for us to um, practice being generous. Start small, start with things, and maybe you work your way to money later on in life. But start small and do something. When uh, people come to move the things from your house, um, I guess the cost is based on how much weight you, they have to move. And I think, um, just hearing some stuff recently, I think the average weight of things in a house is about 15,000 pounds of stuff. So you own seven and a half tons of things in your home, on average. You know, things are heavy, refrigerators heavy, the beds are heavy. Some, some things are heavy, they weigh more than others, right? But still, seven and a half tons is a lot of stuff that we find in the average house. And again, some of the things are necessary, um, some things though are not. Can you thin out some of the things that you do have? In the gospel today, um, Jesus gives the challenge to all of us to avoid greed in all of its forms and to be generous. It's not just a challenge for the rich, but for the poor as well. In many ways, I think the poor can be more tempted towards greed because their thought can simply be, I'm poor, I don't have as much as other people, so I don't have to be generous. I don't have to give. I can keep more things for myself. And again, the temptation is for all of us, no matter what it, where we are in life with our things. No one polices us in this area. We have to watch ourselves. You know what's in your heart. You know what you can survive on and what you can't. There's a lot of conversing with family, a lot of reflecting on this um, over the course of prayer as you see where the Lord leads you in this area. We try our best to avoid greed in all of its forms, especially um, claiming our right to things that we do not need, and especially in the area of hoarding, in those two areas. So maybe just a challenge for this next week. Maybe we can all try to do two things. One, deny yourself something this week. Something you want but do not need. Whether it's small or big, meals or a big, a big purchase, whatever it might be, deny yourself something or at least delay it for a little while if you can. And then secondly, see if you can give something away. Not garbage and trash, right? Something good, something nice, something that a person would like to have. Whether it's to family or friends or strangers, whatever it might be, give something away. And maybe um, as we put these things into practice, we trust more and more in the Lord each day of our lives. We grow in faithfulness and holiness as we seek to avoid greed in all of its forms.